tagline for this show. <laughs> You're gonna fuck up your line, record it. Oh my god, I got so many things to talk about because Harry Potter. Yeah, okay, okay, just start because I'm excited. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, All it right, wasn't cool. too long. It was too short. Perfect. Perfect. All right. uh, We're doing a fucking good morning Vietnam shit here. Uh, last time you, you just kept going on and on. I was like, how do yeah, I get like, 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 When do we yeah, stop? Yeah, like, we got, we got, somebody give a cue here. Shit needs to go on. Uh, All right. Uh, man, this weekend was amazing. Oh, I didn't even do it's amazing. Know All right. Well, welcome to Morning Recharge. Episode uh, 17? It's 18. 18. 18. Shit, I'm always one behind. Yeah. Uh, where on this edition, I'm not wearing my white jacket anymore. I think this might be the first time I've actually have done that. Oh, yeah. In other no, news. Yeah. That's a jacket. In other news, uh, shit went down over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, and Doctor Who left the, uh, Netflix, so that's something. I've been, I watched um, the, the, the Doctor, I watched the last episode of David Tennant. Uh, you know, he's like, I don't want to go. I yeah. saw one of my favorite episodes with the Baldi with the mummy in the Orient Express. So, you know, I just marathon all my all my favorite episodes of Doctor Who this before weekend. They got ripped yeah, it's it's before they got It's gone. <laughs> it's just gone now. Unless you live in the UK, in which case, fuck you. Yeah. Because we want our Doctor Who. Do Do uh, who? Curse you. <laughs> we want our Doctor Who. Yeah. But, you know, anyways, you know, that, that was some rash, bad British PR that happened. The good British PR, it's all about Harry Potter! Of course it is. Because for some goddamn reason, there's this thing called Harry Potter Celebration. It's like the first one they do. It's in uh, Universal Studios in Orlando. Okay. So it's in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And you know, they were hosting this event and there were some of the actors that were going there. I mean, I don't mean any of the top actors, you know, some of the side characters like right. Luna and like, Neville on the bottom and all that. I joked me, Luna, why not? Yeah, I know, just... She, she's, I like, looking I like, fine. she's looking fine, you know. I, I liked her more than Emma Watson, to be honest. I'm sorry, Emma Watson. It's, it's a whole other level, though. Yeah, so, anyways, so you know, celebration starts. People are having fun. The, they do the new sorting game. The, you know, the, you get sorted to your house. You get your own wand. I'm a Ravenclaw, so I'm very there's proud of that. Oh, there's a wand thing? Yeah, you get, that's, a wand chooses you. Shit, I gotta go and do mine. That. Mine is right, like so, chestnut, made of chestnut. It's like 14 and a half inches. It's um, uh, it has unicorn hair in it. So it's Harry Potter's wand. Yeah. Um, I actually, I had completely forgotten about this until I got on a Skype call with a bunch of friends over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were talking about the sorting thing. I'm like, all right, fuck it, you know. What website is this? Pottermore, you know, log in. Yep. I, I log in, I'm like, you know, I make a bullshit password. It's like, yeah, of course. never again, because I'm never going to use that site again. Yeah, what do you get sorted into? And I got Slytherin. <laughs> of course you get sorted as Slytherin. You're, the, you're a Slytherin, my friend. You, you're clearly out. I'm a rebel because I'm clever. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> Anyways, so aside from that, you know, the, all these games, people get sorted, people are happy. All the Hufflepuffs are complaining online. And then of the Pottermore are. people are like, Please, don't worry, Hufflepuff, it's, that means you're a nice person. Yay! Yay! <laughs> totally not trying to tell you that you're a shit guy that has no relevance in the real world, but congrats, no, I mean, like, you're I'd nice. Say, like, seriously, like, you're trying to tell all the Hufflepuffs, like, it's fine, man, it's fine. You should be fine. But anyways, the big news that came out of there were two things. What is this the Wizarding School? Yes! Okay. The Wizarding School. I, I heard about this. Finally. Revealed, so we know where people go to schools around the world, except in Australia. Sorry, Australia. Like uh, J.K. Rowling said, she's working on it. Hey, look, Australia, but, your country is so magical already. I mean, like you gotta fight off pretty much everything <laughs> that's trying to kill you. And when I say everything's trying to kill, I mean everything's trying to fucking kill you. See, you don't guys you don't already need, live. You guys don't need magical creatures. You already have the damn magical creatures. Yeah, you already live in the goddamn wizarding world. So, so you guys are fine. But you know, so let's talk about the schools. Uh, Dude, I'm gonna do an order by the way Portermore um, had them. The first them is um, Bajo Tuoro, which is in Japan. It's a small island um, in Uijima, something like that. Uijima, yeah. No, Oujima. it's an island off of Japan. I, I island. don't know Japanese islands. I, I don't either. So it's, it's a Japanese island. Uh, this place actually looks like a Japanese temple. So, so you know, mm -hmm. each one of these schools represents you know the place they're on. So you know, if you're in Europe, you have a European castle. If you're in Asia, you have a, an Asian structure. Asian castle. Yeah. 
And if you're America, you have an American skyscraper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, the you're, American you're, castle. No, you get Trump Tower. Oh my god. That's, so, not, that's not a castle, that's a cesspool. So, so, you know, it's a nice... People actually in that school wear robes that change color. And uh, depending on how much you advance in um, uh, academically, and if you betray the ministry and the school, your robe turns into white and you get banished. Jesus. <laughs> so, um... But they, they have robes that change colors, and if you get a golden one, that means you're an awesome wizard. So, uh, how do I uh, apply to get in? Uh, you get selected at 7 years old, and then you board it when you're 11. So the two have no chance at all of getting in. Okay, not in Japanese one. The second one is Wagadu, which is in Africa. Alright. Uh, I think uh, the map, it's like near the Congo, so that rainforest area of Africa. Right. It's in a mountain. In a hut. Oh, sorry. No, it's American a mountain. castle. No, like it's African an actual castle. mountain. Yes, yeah, an African yeah. castle. It's a mountain. And uh, the way you get selected to that school is that they go into your dreams and tell you you're a wizard and tell you uh, we cordially invite you to come to our school. That's an old practice that all the other schools used to do until, you know, owls came along and started delivering letters. Okay. So yeah, that's how it works in Africa. And there's one more, right? I remember. Uh, there's, no, there's a lot more. There's um, The third one is Castelobruxo, which is in um, Brazil. Of course. It's uh, it's in the rainforest. The place looks like an Incan temple, which makes sense. You know, you're in that area. Uh, it's it looks like ruins to to Muggles, but it, it has the same effect that Hogwarts has, where like people the, like Muggles see it and they just think it's just ruins. It's ruins and it's dangerous to go there, so yeah. they don't. So they don't. So they're fucking smart and they're not going poking around an old haunted ancient castle. Exactly. So so you know it's so good. They're fine. That's school for all South Americans, which still confuses me because. I'm like, wait, British people, do you guys count Mexico as South America, or is that, like, where is that? Uh, if my knowledge of European education is correct, Mexico is part of Central America, so you can go fuck yourself. Ha! If it's part of Central, that means that you, you can be classified as South, because South is... Okay, then, okay, I'm going to that school. Anyways, I'm fine. Thank you for asking that question for me, European. I need a European opinion on that. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> And you know that's that's cool, you know, one for all South America, so the Hispanic school. Right. And the last one. Oh wait. <clears throat> Professor, what is this substance that we're working with in potions class today? Oh that's cocaine, you don't need to put that in a potion, just sniff it. It's magical on its own. Really? Okay, can't kidding me. Uh, and the 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 other uh, the last one that was revealed was the American school. Right. Based in New York City. And that's about all we know. Well, the name is uh, Ilvermorny. Ilvermorny? Uh, Ilver, Il, Ilvermorny. 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 Uh, I don't know. I am great. <laughs> it's a weird name. It's in it's in southern New York. Um, nice little, you know, 1960s castle-ish in the U.S. Whatever that looks like. Uh, and that's about all we know. They said that we're going to reveal the information later. But, yeah later. Huh. So I'm guessing that you're just going to talk about it as Fantastic Beast moves along because it's also set in New York. Right. And speaking of Fantastic Beast, they also released a behind the scenes trailer for it. And they revealed our four uh, protagonists. First one is of course Newt's Commander, which we already knew the one in the trailer and the posters and all that, the Eddie Raymond's character, um, which is super excited to be in. The second one is called Porpertina. She's that lady, uh, you know, with like the hat, like the was like bluish. Uh-huh. Uh, there's like, uh, there was a man that came with a case of magic creatures and another woman is like, did you open it? Like that woman in the trailer. All right. And then her sister is also part of it. It's, she's called Queenie. She's uh, the redhead that appears in the trailer. All right. And, uh, you know, they have a nice little relationship. And the fourth person is uh, Jacob, who's a no match. Um, a no, no a match. No match. Oh, okay. Muggle. Of, yeah, Muggle. That... Fuck Americans and having their own terminology for shit. Uh, I'm sorry, but if, if 
if people already have an established system where they know to name things by that system and then you Americans come along I said you as Americans and I sound like you Americans in that condition it is come along and say oh no that's not a dog that's a uh, that's a puppy uh, that's a fluffy foofer yeah Fl fluffy fluffy wolf yeah fluffy wolf that's it yeah it's, that's not, no dogs too dogs too old you gotta get with, uh, with the, the new age it's a fluffy wolf Anyways, uh, so Jacob, he just came back from the war because from World War One, he just wants to open a bakery and then he gets involved with all this shenanigans. All this wizards and bullshit. Yeah. They're like, oh, fuck. Anyways, you know, that, that's all the new information we got about that. There's a couple of new scenes that we get to see a little bit, but not much. Uh, and so yeah, that's about all we got from the new Wizard of the World of Harry Potter. I was super excited. Like, I was reading all about every school and like, as much as I could and like research everything, I was going bananas for all of this. All right, so you know, that's it's a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. So what we just did there was right. Yeah. Right. Would you consider that to be a reaction to the news that came out? Huh? Yes. Speaking of reactions, have you oh, yeah, I heard of, I heard of, I heard, I heard the video, I seen everything, I've seen parodies of it all at this point, and I don't really want to talk about it because that's fucked up. Like, I, I really don't give a flying shit. I do. Fuck fine bros. How the hell did two human beings manage to get their own heads so far up their asses to think that that would be okay? Like, congratulations, you performed a miracle. People will come from miles to see it. The two men that shoved their own heads up their own asses. Congratulations, go fuck yourselves. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk about it just because no, it because would take forever to talk about it. It would, but that, it's already been covered. However, the implications of this are a lot more serious than what they're doing. Because if you can manage to trademark React, create a, a huge empire based on that, who's to say that someone can't go and trademark Let's Play? Well, well they already said they're not there. I mean, they don't own the React genre. But they own the React format. What is the re their React format? Like exactly what they have in their channel. So point a camera at two people, talking about shit, and reacting to it. What we're doing. Something like that, yeah. It's we're, we're, that we're, we're technically stealing their format then, if that's all it is. Th that's the thing, is that they're, they're using so much corporate and legal jargon that no one can understand. Like, they, they're, they're, they're saying what they want to do without saying exactly what they want to do. You know, that, that's actually, how you get you know, away. They actually came out with an apology video for it, like the day oh, after. They did? Yeah. Good. Go fuck themselves. They're like, okay, this is what we really meant. Here's what you do, right? You take that video, you upload it to a 1920s, you know, four kilobyte hard drive. Yeah. And then take that hard drive and shove it up your ass. Okay. And to the kids that are too, uh, well, we're too young to know what that is. But the people that don't know how to Google what a 1940s kilobyte hard drive is, it's about the size of two cars. Yeah. So they can go shove that up their ass. Okay. But what I mean is, what this would mean, is, well, first of all, they already have gone after people, or rather, full screen has gone after people. Yeah. Um, and if they only hold the trademark for it, right? Imagine what would happen if someone copyrighted a different term that was huge on YouTube right now. Let's play. Uh, let's play. Which or, Sony already tried. It failed. Tried that and they failed. But not because let's play as a format where you record yourself talking uh, over a video game. game. They got copyrighted because there's a company that owns let's -Z play. L E T Z play. Not because there's a YouTube phenomenon or a genre. Uh, what do you call Let's Plays? It's a genre. Genre? All right. And they didn't get their copyright trademark, whatever, didn't get thrown out because there's already a genre. It got thrown out because it's a different company that has a similar name already. Yeah. And that's what's bullshit to me. It is, it is absolute bullshit. I mean, Imagine. to be honest, it's like, I understand what they were trying to do. But it totally backfired. Like, did they, they? They just they didn't know how to like manage it correctly. I mean, like, and, I don't know. understand if it was like you know, oh, we want to make a skit world. You know, where like you know, yeah. you can throw your skit ideas to us. We'll help you refine them, and uh, then we'll help you uh, make a video out of it. Yeah, that's that's cool. I understand yeah. that, that takes talent. You know, that's actually a bit more hard work. Sit two people down in front of the camera, have them talk about shit, and then react that's to it. it. Yeah. That's the easiest fucking thing you can do. I'm doing it while fucking driving. <laughs> That's that, that, I mean, the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
what I wish I had. Um, I don't know what I did. Then. Do you want to react to something else? But try and trademark react videos, which are the literal bottom of the. You the easiest the, thing of the war in the world. Yeah. You have taken off the bottom of the barrel, and now you're scraping the dirt underneath it, trying to look for talent. So yeah, fine bros, go fuck yourselves, you fucking fucks of fucking notable they fucking lost us. They lost a good amount of subscribers during the weekend. An infinite amount of fucks upon your house. Yeah. Uh, also, there were four, as, as of last night, 10 o'clock p.m., I saw 14 live streams on YouTube for the fine bros subscription count, which were all just streaming. The There's no fresh, they're going down, uh-huh, yeah. No, not even that. There were people that were making external websites that would refresh every five seconds to show you a live count of their uh, subscription, subscription count. Ooh. Whereas YouTube only refreshes every minute. These sites refresh every five seconds. So, of course, they were like... And they were all, you know, doing DJ stuff where they were playing music in the background and whatnot. Yeah. And it was amazing. We made, basically set them back two weeks worth of subscribers in one day. Yep. That was amazing. It's impressive. Yeah, that's, but that's it, it's, their own, it's their own fault. So, that's why you don't you know. piss off the internet. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of reacting, can I react to something else? Sure. So, um, during the weekend, we got, uh, there was like a tournament, um, on like, uh, you know, uh, esports. One of these was Super Smash Brothers. They showcased uh, Bayonetta and uh, Corrin in action and then um, Bayonetta's stage. They said this DLC is coming out February 3rd. What? Two days. What? We get to play as these two characters in two days. I need to go get some main shop money then. I know. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that, that was exciting. And of course, you know, there's a great rumor for the NX, which is like coming uh, that Smash Brothers is going to be a launch title for NX. And that Namco, Namco Bandai is making several games for the NX already, they're already developing games for it. So I think of that. Especially this matching NX thing. As I'm saying it's a port. They don't have it's enough time. It's absolutely yeah. a port. I'm still sad about that. Add in at least one new character for free or give us the option of, you know, give more DLC. Don't yeah. just do a straight port of it. Because then, you know, you're kind of getting to that area of, you know... The same thing that I would have made, or the same argument I've been making for Zelda Wii U. If they just had that as launch title on X. Why would I bother buying a new console to play the same version of my game in a slightly higher definition? To someone who doesn't have a whole lot of money. Yeah. College student. Yeah. Uh, college freshman at that. Why would I bother dropping $300 on a new console and 60 bucks on the game that I already own to play in higher definition? Hell, I own that game twice. Yep. See, what, I, what I'm thinking is like they should just release the game with like every mode and every character and every stage from both versions into one. Just to make like, you know, a golden edition, you know, version of the game, championship edition, whatever. Uh, and just have an extra character or something. I think they'll be fine with that. Especially because uh, looking at the Wii U's base and what the NX could potentially be, if you know it is the success that Nintendo wants it to be, uh, I think it's just a good idea because you you allow the people that didn't get to play it before, which is a lot, you know, be able to play it for the first time. Yeah, I see. I see your point. I mean, because like it. I mean, to be honest, the, the NX should not be targeted solely at Nintendo fans. Like, I mean, that's true. I, like, like for example, I am not, gonna buy the NX regardless. But it also should not be pointed solely at non-Nintendo fans too. If your idea is that oh we'll sell the NX because people that didn't buy the Wii U or 3DS are gonna buy this one to play Smash Bros. That now you're kind of neglecting your already established fan base. Like do what satisfies your fan base first, and then try and reach out further. Uh, that that will make sense to me because you know you got yeah, uh, yeah whatever like in, 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 in a business you know, sense yeah that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in a short term 
PR wise, you don't want to piss off your fan base either. Yeah, but, but you don't want to piss off your fans. Sony, like people are yeah. getting pissed about Sony because they're removing functions from the PS3. Because hey, there's a newer version out that you can buy the PS4. Get that instead. That has the stuff that we've taken out of this one. You know, it's like people are getting pissed about that because yeah, yeah it's in the license agreement. But it's like why didn't license agreement in the first place? But it's like you know, I don't. Yeah, people like you are gonna, or you buy the NX regardless. I'll buy the NX regardless. I think like, Nintendo I was, fans are gonna buy the, the NX regardless. I'm not. Not immediately at least. I just got the Wii U like less than nine months ago. Yeah. Yeah, you did. So I'm not gonna jump ship for the NX immediately because I haven't or I haven't enjoyed my money's worth on the Wii U yet. See, I, I wish I just because have, I've been I had it since launch. Yeah, you have it since launch. But it's like I was late. I was a very late adopter of the NX. Uh, Wii U, so it's like, I I wanna I'm still trying to experience the Wii U cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so you know like those late adopters, uh, mid to late adopters I guess, aren't going to be so thrilled about a brand new console coming out, especially if they're not intent on buying it immediately. It's not that much anyway. Let's be honest, it's not that much. I mean still, <laughs> but uh, if you want me, like I. I could be persuaded to buy the NX, sure, but not if the NX is a high, higher definition or higher uh, high resolution Wii U. resolution Wii U. Then no, it's like you gotta you got man, you have to offer something in the next generation that this current generation doesn't have. Yeah. To convince me to buy it, if you're going to port over my favorite game and say that's it, here's your old game on a new console, I'm not gonna buy it. If they say, here's your new game with new uh, stages, new characters, a story mode like the Subspace Emissary, uh, two new waves of DLC coming out, yeah, I'd probably buy it. That, uh, that would yeah. persuade me to go on and buy it, yeah. But if it's like, yeah, here's a Smash Bros. Wii U on the NX, so now it's the Smash Bros. Wii U NX 45 version. Congrats. Yeah. I, I would not... See, I, again, the, the only thing I'm saying about it, especially this being a port... Uh, is that you can't you don't know how licensing deals are working you know the whole Bayonetta and like all the third party characters are in Super Smash Bros right now it's like I think Nintendo wants to stick with those as long as they can so so I feel like the only way they could have a better game than Smash Wii U is by adding to it adding to that already existing game which is what I'm saying add to it don't just port yeah ported it over because you know I'm I'm not a huge graphics buff um, I mean and I mean I say this I have a beefy computer yeah, yeah. but it's like I there's a uh, game on uh, that I got off of Steam recently um, and I will tell you it runs like shit on uh, high uh, high to medium settings for me right yeah and I'm talking like I'm getting frame issues I'm getting just a whole crap ton of problems I put all my uh, graphics all my resolutions all like you know everything that's cosmetic down to low game runs fine still actually looks decent yeah I don't care it's on low quality and it still looks good and it plays so it's like you know just because you give me a high-res version of something doesn't mean I'm gonna be super excited and piss myself like an excited puppy and buy it I was excited twice in a sentence but I don't give a damn so it the NX being a graphical powerhouse compared to the Wii U is not going to sell anything for me. I, I need yeah. more than just graphics. Yeah, I mean, I, th I mean, I like the idea, whole idea of being able to take the NX portably and like, keep it in the home and, you know, be that duality. I would love to see that happen, which is what it's really uh, So that's cool. And, and again, I mean, to be honest, and I'll be honest with you, I'll buy the NX. Like, that, that's a given for me. Like, I'll buy it. However... I will not get Smash Brothers NX if it literally is just the Wii U version, like the Wii U version of Smash Brothers. Just because, like, well, I already have that, so I'm just gonna play that game. It's exactly. Gonna, it's most likely gonna be backwards compatible. So we're making. So I'm just gonna put it in there. We're making the same argument. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still gonna buy the NX, but like, if it's the same, a hundred percent exactly the same game, then I'll just I mean, put in the disc in of there. Of course. And right that's now, it. right now, all that we're hearing is. Uh, Smash Bros. port for launch. Yeah. We haven't heard anything else about launch titles for the NX. Uh, no, we haven't even gotten an official announcement out of the NX. Oh shit. Dragon Quest XI is gonna come to an X. 
it's probably going to be launched just because of how far it is in development. I take back everything I've said before. I am going to buy the NX the day it comes out. I fucking love the Dragon Quest games. <laughs> Also, that sold me right there. That one <laughs> sentence sold me on it. All my bitching and complaining from earlier is gone. Dragon Quest has sold it for me. Uh, there's, I mean, there's also. I a, fucking hate you. There's also a rumor that Final Fantasy VII, the HD remake, it might also come to an X, especially since that Cloud is in Smash Brothers, so that you know, also that you know foreshadowing something. Final Fantasy VII was you know on the any any no. or SNES. Mm -hmm. It was in the PlayStation. There was, was there, the first there was a Final, Final Fantasy. It's there a, was a was, Final Fantasy game on a Nintendo system. Final Fantasy VI and before that. Okay, they might be doing a throwback. Like, hey, you know, we kind of grew up on your console. Have our latest or our remake on your latest one. You know, they, yeah. that, I would understand that. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Not the seven thing. Look, I yeah. never played Final Fantasy VII. See, I haven't either. But I mean, like, that's you know, it's up to some people. I, I love Final Fantasy. Like, in, you give them that option, that's something else to play in. It's already coming to PS4, it's probably gonna, uh, timely though, it's probably just gonna be time exclusive, and I would think like they would put in an X. Definitely not on the Xbox. Def most likely not on the Xbox, like I would be very surprised if they put it on an Xbox, but an X, I could definitely see that happening. I and that, that and if that like comes out at launch, having Dragon Quest 11, Final Fantasy 7, Smash Brothers, I'm gonna go on a limb and say they're gonna release a Mario game in that in there too. That's a killer launch lineup. Killer, really? Fucking killer. Killer. I mean it's a good la launch lineup. But I certainly again, you know I'm I'm for the idea that you know if you're going to launch something new you gotta have something new to go with it. Mm -hmm. So a oh shit what, yeah, the, what the hell just happened to the camera? I know. I, um, just, I just saw the Bernie sticker. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so having a port to celebrate the new uh, console would be kind of weird. I me. mean, regardless, the 3DS launch in will launch with remakes. Actually, 3DS. I mean, I had a couple of original games on the 3DS, so they weren't all remakes. No, I mean, oh I'd god, like there's the a. All right, this chick has a fuel burn, a bullet bill, and a fem. Is that the, feminist? feminist? I had yeah. to stop myself from saying the other one. It, that's a yeah. feminist sticker on yeah. the car. Dear God, that is just a whole lot of what? It's probably the Trump voter. <laughs> no, it's, it's clearly Hillary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, no, that would make more sense. <laughs> it would, yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's about it. That we just talked about everything NX and stuff. I'm just excited because I feel like this should, they, if NX releases this year, they need to start talking about it now. I mean, I think they cannot wait till E3 to talk about it. Uh, oh, they need to talk before speaking of, E3. Speaking of E3, E3 might be dying, so that wouldn't even be a possibility at that point. Because EA has pulled out E3, they're doing their own thing, but they're they're doing a presser at E3. But yeah, that's about but it. EA's a doing, bunch of assholes. I mean, yeah, fuck EA. You know, fuck Konami, fuck EA, fuck Sony. Um, but it's like Nintendo's already been doing this. On their own, you know, they've been doing the Nintendo Directs during E3s. So, no, I mean, like, but I mean, if you're going with a new system, could you imagine just the return of Nintendo to E3 as in an actual live press conference, and then just having developers like, oh, here is X developer, an X developer, an X developer, an X developer, and all of them are going to be able to play for an X, and they're all going to have launch launch titles for an X. We're going to have Ubisoft working on it. We're going to have EA working on it. We're going to have Activision working on it. Square Enix. I still think, you know, EA is a good idea. Uh, back when, you know, people only had TV to tell them about video games. Yeah. Now that we have the internet and, you know, internet news outlets, let them do the, you know, announcement stuff. Just, tell, you know, do your own private thing. Hey, we're coming up with a console slash game slash whatever. And then people will go get shit over it. Yeah. E3 is kind of dead, in my opinion. It should be kind of, uh, pretty much dead. Uh, and I mean... Attendance has been dropping on it for the last couple of years. You know, people. The hell, I mean, I can. I could probably name a couple of different YouTube outlets that I go to for video game news. So it's like, you know, it's why bother watching EA anymore, or E3 anymore? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we're getting kind of into the shady area of you know opinions and uh, information. Yep. 
Thanks for joining yes. us for this. Oh, car's yeah. still running. Whoops. Um, thanks for joining us on uh, this episode of Morning Recharge, where I don't know what the fuck just happened. It was intense. We went from Harry Potter to Fine Brothers to Smash Brothers and X and all that stuff. So we did our usual three topics. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. Which I should say that's not scripted. No. We don't, we don't decide that. Hey, we're going to do three topics today. It's, that just happens. We just have a list of stuff that we might want to touch on. It's just that sometimes we, sometimes we just talk one thing. And sometimes we just kind of talk about a million things and it's just something. It's it's something. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining us on uh, Morning Recharge. We'll see you again and, uh, in, a, in a couple, couple of days. days. Yeah. Uh, whenever. Um, what the fuck was that? Eh, yeah, whatever. I did report uh, crashed. We don't have an outro saying, so... We need to really work on that. We have we yeah. have a good intro, which is us just screaming good morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Bye-bye! Bye.